So you're working on your swing. You're practicing hard. The swing looks good on camera. You're getting your mechanics good. You're hitting it solid. Everything's looking good. And then you go to the game. And then everything just falls apart. You, your swing looks terrible on camera. Nothing feels the same. You can't hit anything. What happened? What happened from the great swing you had in practice to the, to the terrible swing you had in the game? There's a lot of little things in between. But if we understand what goes wrong and how they go wrong, well, we can start to match up what we do in practice in the game. In today's video, I'm going to show you one of the biggest things that I see students do differently in the game than they do in practice that's limiting their ability in the game. And once you get this, it makes it so much easier and gives you a much bigger jump at matching up those two swings. Let's go ahead and get started. Now guys, we got a lot of great content coming out this year. And if you don't wanna miss out, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That's the only way you can get notified when we come out with new content. And make sure you hit that like button. That really helps us grow the channel. And if you guys have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. Leave them in the comment section below. The craziest part about what we're gonna go over today is when I ask students what they see. So they'll show me a video of their of their game swing and they'll say, what's going wrong? And I ask them what they see and they don't they don't see it. And it's so it's so obvious if you know what you're looking for. And what I'm talking about is when we get into the game, let's just say we're hit, we're, we're at practice right now, and my regular swing in practice is just nice swings, good balance finishes. And then the next thing that we see when we go into the game, we see, we see a swing that kind of looks kind of like this. We pretty much start running before we hit the ball. This happens all the time, guys. The simple explanation of today's lesson is we need to finish our swing in the game. I see it, there cannot be an early breakdown of the swing if we are going to be a great hitter. If we start to make our swing and we hit the ball and we're breaking down to run before we, before we ever get into our full finish, then we're only swinging with half a swing. If I'm swinging, I need, again, the, finishing, the finish of the, the, the swing is just a report card of what we did down here. But it's also, if I'm going to max out my bat speed, I'm going to have to swing to a full finish, which is where we're going to have all of our weight on our lead side through impact. We're going to be nice and balanced. The bat's going to finish all the way behind us, all this good stuff. That's what's going to allow me to max out my speed. I have a finish point to my swing as long as possible. That gives me the most amount of room to speed up. But if I swing and I break down before I even finish, well, then I'm, again, I'm only swinging with half a swing. So how do we do this? So let's say, you know, I've had, I've had students come in and, and say, hey, I tried to finish my swing and I couldn't do it. Well, like anything else, it's not, it seems very simple. The concept, I'm sure you guys at home are right now are like, oh, I just finished my swing in the game. That's, that's that simple. Well, it is that simple, but if we don't train it like anything else, it might not be that simple to execute. So what we do to train this is simply we do what we would do in the game. What we're going to do to train finishing our swing in the game is we're going to start off on the tee. We're going to just kind of imagine ourselves in a game-like scenario. No matter what you do with the ball, you're going to hit the ball. You're going to hold your finish. For I, I, like, I like to have my students do a 1-1,000 count, and then you're going to run to first base. So we're going to start off with a swing, 1-1,000, drop the bat, and take a couple steps and run to first base. Now, a lot of, a lot of players are like, okay, after they do it a couple of times, they're like, I got it. Well, again, like anything else we work on, we need some repetition so that we can start telling our brain, hey, we need to finish our swing in the game. Now, the next thing that we do is we do the same, the same exact drill in front toss, side toss. We go ahead, let's just imagine we're in front toss right here. I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna hit the ball. One, 1,000, drop my bat, and then run. And then what we'll do from there is we'll start building up the, 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 the repetition of saying, hey, I'm going to finish my swing and then run. Even though it happens really fast in the game, we're going to finish the swing and then run. Now, when you get into, let's say, batting practice and you're going, let's say you're playing your four for four games or you're playing simulated games, now you can start working on this. Instead of just playing a four for four game where you hit the ball and you say, okay, I got a hit or whatever it might be, you're actually going to hit the ball and run like you would in the game. So I'm going to make sure that I finish my swing. I know I'm in a cage or I'm at practice or whatnot. I don't have to run all the way to first base, but I'm going to finish my swing and then I'm going to break down and run to first base. So what we're trying to do is develop this mindset of, hey, I know that I'm breaking down early in the game. So what I need to do is I need to train 
getting to a full finish and then running and then just kind of speed it up from there. So remember, even though this concept is extremely simple, it, you need to train it, even, especially if this is a problem in your swing. And I'm sure if you guys go check your videos, you'll, a lot of you guys out there will see that you're breaking down way early. Train it first so that when you do in the end of the game, it's just second nature and then you don't have to think about it in the game. And then you could allow all of that, that great practice that you've had, all the great hits, it'll at least give you an, an opportunity to repeat that. Now, of course, there's some other things that go into transferring your your game speed swing, you know, in practice into the game. But bar none, this is one of the biggest ones that's going to allow you to get there. Because if you're if you're swinging here into a full finish in practice, and you're only swinging to here in the game, it's not the same swing. So repeating it's going to be very difficult. These guys, train it, own it, and that way you'll start being able to execute it in the game and transferring your game speed swing in practice into the game. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, stay tuned. I got an even better bonus coming up for you. I'm going to play a preview of one of our all-access membership lessons that you can get instant access to simply by clicking on the iCard that's popping up in the top portion of your screen or in the link in the description below. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to now start showing how our weight shift is involved with the release of the bat. We just simply need to understand exactly where we want to be in our weight shift. So we're going to get a lot more specific. We're going to be talking about the timing of getting the back pocket in front of the tee at the same time we're hitting the ball. But the first thing we need to do, guys, is we need to rep this out and make sure that we can definitely get the weight transfer that we need. So we're going to put our arms across our chest. We're going to get at least 100 repetitions 